Welcome to Yanko Africa. This is Ama. I want to thank you guys once again for tuning in and happy new year. I pray that your new year is off to a great start. And so as promised guys, but before I do that, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you click the notification bell so that you will receive notifications each time I upload a share. All right. So the purpose of the share, you can see the title. The purpose of the share, let me state, is not to embarrass anyone, not to condemn anyone but to help us all have the best transition to the continent as possible. Even if you're just going to stay for a short term or maybe a year, or if you're making a permanent move, we want to do so without having to beg, borrow, and definitely without stealing, okay? And so um, if you find yourself in this share, good. It's not intended for you. Uh, specifically but the purpose is to reach each and every one of us even in doing this year I reach myself you should reach you know it, it should reach everyone whenever you upload anything someone should be touched by it someone should gain some information someone should feel like hey you know I needed to hear that all right so you know we can move to the continent with all great expectations you know that hey I'm getting out of here I'm free I got a little bit of money got some tax return got what 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 all right we just want to get out of here okay or you just want to go and see the world you want to see a different place and you've always dreamed of going to Africa whatever your purpose is but you don't want to get there and realize that wait a minute they didn't tell me this all right they said I can come here and live on three dollars a day and then you find yourself sitting down frustrated and wondering how did I get here the costs are adding up and I didn't know they evict people in Africa oh uh, yeah they will evict you African style all right so in this year, I want to show us the minimal cost. I mean, the least amount of money that you can spend to move to Ghana, okay, for at least one year, okay? You can stretch it to 18 months if you are extra frugal. But guys, I want us to do it without having to, you know, frustrate ourselves, family members. And listen, those friends that you have on the continent, you will realize after some time when the money starts getting short, that they have been chopping on you all the time. You know, you didn't even realize that they've been feeding better and eating better than some of them than they have in a long time. Now, my African friends don't get offended, but you know that's the truth. Some of them have been eating better than they have since you have arrived and landed in the country, all right? And so the money that you have now, please, we don't want to spend all of it and find ourselves in a tough situation like homelessness, okay? And so let's use it wisely and let's deal with the, in this year, I'm going to deal with some of the most uh, needful items that you will use, uh, need when you make the transition um, or if you go to stay for a year, all right? And the number one thing is going to be housing, okay? So when you get there, unless you are living somewhere, you know, with a friend initially at no cost, um, it's going to cost you money. All right. So there are various types of housing, but I'm going to deal with you with some of the least expensive housing, non-traditional, you know, houses that people show you online. First of all, it's the chamber, chamber and hall um, type housing. Now today they have modernized them and some of them have, you know, two stories, but what they are, are places that consist of one room or maybe two rooms and a kitchen and a bathroom. Some of them don't have a bathroom. Some of them you share bathroom, uh, on con on site with others but most often these days um you don't okay now this picture on the screen is a traditional compound housing you know, we call that face me i face you court okay meaning that anything can happen here you know you can have some face offs every now and then because you're sharing a small space but the newer ones you know they give you more of your private um housing and so you can have a little bit more freedom and privacy. The cost can range anywhere from $50 a month to a couple hundred dollars a month, right? But if you want to live at the least amount, I would say budget for $50 a month, which will cost you $600 a year, up to $150 a month for a chamber and hall, which is about $1,800 a year, all right? The next expense that you must budget for is the unexpected such as medical cost all right the cost of going to a doctor in ghana is going by all by all means be less um, it's going to be less than in the u.s but uh the cost of prescriptions can become very costly if you have to get regular prescriptions 
um, if you're in the hospital for a while, they're going to send you out every day. Every day you're going to be making drugs to get runs to get drugs. Um, when I say drugs, I mean um, prescriptions, vitamins, drips, anything that you your loved one needs. Someone will have to go and get that. All right. And if you are going alone, then you need to budget for someone to make those errands for you. OK, so at the minimum, save up a thousand dollars, minimum a thousand dollars to cover your unexpected medical costs. Do not touch that money. Have it sitting there. And also you need to plan on death. OK, we should not have to fry chicken and fish to get you back to the U.S. or to bury you in Ghana, if that's your will. But life happens and so does death. OK, so make sure you have an insurance policy um, that will cover you internationally. Um, the average cost, depending on your age, I would say, guys, is going to be about forty dollars for 18 months worth of coverage is going to cost you about seven hundred and twenty dollars. But how much will it cost us if we have to bury you? We have to, you know, get all sorts of um, things done um, to make sure that you have a proper burial. So make sure you have international insurance. OK. Um, uh, life insurance the next cost is electricity now this varies depending on you know your usage if you see for example this air conditioning here if you have an air conditioner and you are using it just uh, minimally it's gonna cost one thing if you have no AC no washer it's gonna cost another thing so I would estimate $50 or less per month without an air conditioning air conditioner and without a washer okay about $50 or even less per month okay so that's pretty good that's gonna cost you about $600 or less per year but if you are using an AC or a washer minimally I mean like bare minimum I would estimate between 50 to a hundred dollars um, per month and that can cost you from six to twelve hundred dollars a year cooking is going to cost you much less cooking is usually with a gas cylinder that can um, last you about a month and a half really cooking twice a day so about twelve dollars uh, per month or even you know you'll get more time out of that so it's not very costly for cooking now you have to also factor in the cost of the stove and so on but water water is going to um going to cost you um it just depends on how you get your water some places you will have running water some places you will have to go import your water or have someone bring it to you in a water tank or you will have um but wheelbarrows and you go get your own water or you pay someone to go and pick it up also your bottled water or your sachet water you want to take into consideration this is a reservoir if you have a reservoir you want to keep that filled and the cost of that can vary I'll have a list of the different prices in just a bit but um, your drinking water should be separate than the water that you use for washing unless you are tapped into the city line and you add a purifier if you want to do that or you just feel comfortable drinking the regular water you may feel Feel comfortable drinking that all right but water can run you from anywhere from ten dollars to forty dollars per month it all depends on you and your usage okay so the next thing up is the cost of communication mobile phones um, you can get a yam phone a yam phone is a basic phone it's like you can call and you can text you can receive text you can get a smartphone um, you know any type of equipment that we can buy in the West you can get in Ghana but you just have to factor in the cost okay but this year is about the minimum cost to do this all right so I have written here that a yam phone is going to cost you about fifteen dollars a basic smartphone 65 um, your prepaid services a month about 15 and the estimated data usage can range between 30 and a hundred dollars a month all right and when you purchase a phone always make sure you purchase from a reputable dealer all right and so if you haven't done already go ahead and subscribe click that uh, notification bell and leave a comment all right and don't forget to like as well now continuing on with the cost of housing okay so when you get housing there's so many things that need to be put into that house all right furniture furniture okay furniture don't spend a lot of money on furniture if you know you're going to be moving in a year okay maybe you're building your house or maybe you're doing something else and you're going to get into another place don't spend a lot of money guys you can live a good life with just basic furniture 
just because the furniture is being sold on the side of the road don't think that it's inexpensive these guys put a lot of work into this and they will charge you but guess what you can furnish your home with plastic furnishing and it will look just as good i'm telling you i lived in one place and my outside area my landlord i remember he said you know these women they are jealous of you don't mind them they are jealous of you all right <laughs> because i had decorated the outside with just simple items i don't like a lot of stuff but just a few pieces and some plants and it was looking like a million dollars honey seriously so you don't have to spend a lot of money to have a great impact and on how things look okay so i've estimated here anywhere from 900 to 1800 dollars, and that's high believe me i can do a lot with 1800 dollars, and then add in some additional costs if you're buying you know supplies like machine uh, a washer or something like that or an ac now curtains towels uh, blankets uh, let's see all sorts of household supplies pots pans dishes mops uh, buckets uh, cleaning supplies uh, what else brooms everything that you would need blenders irons iron ironing boards uh, clothesline clothes pins all of those things if you really budget and go to the market to the market you can get a lot of these things or even from some of the shops along your road area you can I say you can get all of these things or even get some of them made for under three hundred dollars but at the most about five hundred dollars okay for everything okay but remember this is getting your basic needs it's not about starving it's not about you know barely living but getting your basic needs met for the least amount of money okay so all of that talk about living on two dollars a day no now eating okay you're gonna have a lot of stands like this where people are gonna be selling things like rice they'll be selling oranges fruits your some vegetables and such you have to determine how, where you're going to be shopping most often okay and then that's gonna help you to budget you can buy from your local people in your area who are selling fruits and vegetables rice sugar you can go to the market and get things from the market which would be this kind of setup here here where you buy your spices you know if you want to buy your seafood from the market or if you want to buy your seafood from the grocery store or your chicken and stuff from the grocery store but or you know and buy your fruits and vegetables from the market it all depends on your preferences and taste guys but please don't think you're gonna be living on two dollars a day okay you, you just can't you can't because this is this share particularly you can if you want to but it won't be easy and it won't be nice all right this share is for those who are foreigners who want to live on the least amount of money in Ghana not so much as you know a uh, a, a, a local but a, a who you are you are someone who is from a western country who is living in Ghana but you want to live on the least amount of money if you know you like to go to Burger King because they are there Pizza Hut Domino's all of these places are in Ghana you need to budget for that as well okay so coming up I'm going to just give you um, just an estimate of what I think you're going to need which is the minimum cost depending on whether you're eating locally like a local person traditional local meals Western tradition restaurants take out local grocery stores or markets it's gonna cost you anywhere between a hundred and five hundred dollars a month but be honest with yourself you know yourself you know you like Burger King you know you like Domino's you know you like Pizza Hut every now and then all right and you know you like to go out and eat traditional food from a nice traditional restaurant it's going to cost you more than just the local corner food all right now transportation i was try to find housing near all the things that i'm going to need all right or housing that's going to have sellers coming through where i can buy food if i need to i won't have to take a car everywhere if you know that you are on a very limited budget all right so the cost of transportation to walk to these places is going to be free but if you're taking troll troll it's going to cost you something if you're taking uber you're taking lyft if you are taking a taxi if you're renting a private car it's all going to cost you money guys it's going to cost you if you plan on renting a car it's going to cost you money so after um, these few images, I'm going to give you a breakdown on some of the cost of transportation. All right. So, oh, yeah. If you're planning on buying a car, do your due diligence. Honey, the average person can be running some sort of scam. 
one of the most popular scams is to have a port tag on their car for two or three years and then they sell it to you telling you that they just brought it in from the port when really they've been driving around with that tag for years now they're fixing some things with the tag issues now so hopefully that will improve and cut down on some things okay so here's a breakdown walking zero motorbike these are one-way costs it can cost you between 50 cents and two dollars taxi drops just basic in and out if you live like a few uh maybe two minutes from the road and you don't want to walk it can cost you a dollar just to get in or out depending uber four dollars just to go about five to seven miles taxi three hour minimum you know rates you can get with them and they will negotiate some terms for you there all right so guys i have run out of time and space i'm going to try to put the totals here on this blue screen to let you know what the least amount is and then the least amount the highest of the least okay this is still a minimal minimalist perspective but i'm going to show you the range and cost okay so i'll just sum up the range here and then you guys this i hope this will help you to make a better um, decision decision about your move and better prepared so that we won't find ourselves in a situation um, where we have to bail you out. Not that we don't want to help you, but we want to help you before you get in that situation. And you don't want to find yourself constantly have to, you know, ask people for money, get donations. It doesn't mean that people can't support you if you're going out and supplying them with information or you have something that you're offering in exchange for the donations, okay? Um, or, or whatever. And I'm not hating on any of you. Ask for money if you want. Okay, just keep keep asking, keep begging, all right? But that's not a good example of how to do this without begging, okay? How to make your transition without having to depend on donations, okay? All right, so, um, but you're grown, you can do whatever you want to do, but I'm just saying, let's do it in the best way possible. And there's a sort of pride, a good healthy pride, in being able to do things without depending upon others. And then there's a freedom of being able to share whatever you want to share and not having to consider that, you know, I may offend someone by what I say because I am going to need their donations, okay? So anyway, thank you guys for tuning. Happy New Year.